Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to address to a very important uh, a topic which is the strategic interaction uh, between the participants in the matching market. So if you remember in our framework we have students, colleges, uh, they declare their preferences and then a central authority, a matchmaker, uh, by taking into those declared preferences consideration, the matchmaker basically suggests which student is going to match to what university and which university will be student with what uh, student. Well, if you want to change or manipulate this system, your outcome in your favor, here obviously you can uh, just twist your preferences, maybe, and then get a better result. The thing is, is, is this possible? So this is a, what we call a strategic manipulability of a mechanism, all right? So let's try to formalize things, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll very vaguely talk about some notions and then give you an example. So a mechanism is a rule uh, that produces a matching for any reported preference. So for example, the deferred acceptance algorithm that we just talked about in the previous episode, whether it's a student uh, proposing or college proposing, doesn't matter. These are simple mechanisms. You can come up with a bunch of other mechanisms, all right? But the mechanism is nothing but uh, a, a, a sort of a process which produces match or matching for every reported preference, okay? Well, a mechanism is strategy proof. Well, that's a concept we are later, when we talk about mechanism design, we're going to formally define it. So for now, I'm going to keep it rather informal. We call a mechanism strategy proof if telling the true preferences is a dominant strategy for each participant, for each player. What does that mean? That means uh, the mechanisms we keep talking about in the matching, for example, the student, op, uh, student proposing deferred acceptance algorithm, students, each student should say, hey, you know what, if I declare my preferences truthfully, uh, this is the result I'm gonna get. If I manipulate it, if I, if I declare my preferences somehow differently, probably I'm gonna get another outcome. Well, the thing is by, by reporting my preferences differently, can I get a better outcome? Well, if the answer is no, I mean, you can't get better outcome, whatever your opponents do, whether they declare their preferences truthfully, untruthfully, doesn't matter. But if you, um, if you cannot improve your situation, regardless of your opponent's actions, well then we, and, and if this is true for any player, a school and or colleges, well then we call this mechanism strategy proof. Strategy proof mechanisms are good because gaming is not going to benefit any participant. All right, I mean, by, by gaming the system, you're not going to benefit yourself. Uh, you may actually hurt, end up hurting yourself and maybe others, but you will certainly not benefit yourself. So what's the point of uh, sort of gaming the system? Just truthfully declare uh, your preferences, all right? So strategy-proof mechanisms are like a uh, uh, cherry on top uh, dessert. Uh, well, unfortunately, they're very rare. And so in the matching context, this is what we're going to look at, but first try to understand uh, uh, this concept of strategy proofness or manipulability by a very simple example. So let's suppose there are two students, S1 and S2, and then two colleges, okay? C1 and C2, for simplicity. And, um, you know, all the schools and all the colleges are acceptable for the students. Student one prefers college one over college two. Student two has preferences over college two over college one. And college one prefers student two over student one. And college two prefers student one over student two. Well, if this is uh, the true preferences, okay, and if everybody declares the preferences truthfully, and in fact, we're going to uh, concentrate on player one, uh, uh, college one, I'm sorry. 
If college one truthfully reveals his preference, its preferences, well then what is going to be the outcome? Well, let's suppose the mechanism is used, uh, the DA, but the student proposing, student proposing deferred acceptance algorithm. Well, in this case, the matching is going to be this. S1, student one will be matched with college one, student two will be matched with college two. How do I know that? Well, simple. In the first step, each student is going to uh, apply to his or her best school. So student one will apply to college one, student two will apply to college two. Well, college one is going to receive only one applicant, which is student one, and it's going to accept. And college two will receive only one applicant, which is student two, and it will accept as well. So in the first period, uh, the game will be over or the uh, the process will be over. Everybody, every offer will be accepted. And so uh, this is going to be the match. Okay. Well, now let's suppose the college one uh, says only student two is acceptable to me. Okay. So this is why I have this C1 prime. Okay. So let's call it C1 prime. Uh, so student two is acceptable, but only student two. Okay. This is how the school two, college one, I'm sorry, declares its preferences. Let's suppose, so he, he lies about its, its true preferences or its true ranking. Well then, what is going to happen in this case? Uh, mu prime, let's call it. All right, so let's, let's solve it. Again, don't forget, we use exactly the same mechanism, student uh, proposing deferred acceptance. Well, in the first round or in the first step, uh, step one, uh, student one is going to apply to college one and student two is going to apply to college, uh, college two, right? Well, the college one is, well, I mean, remember, those are preferences submitted to the central authority. The central authority is going to look at college one's preferences. The college one says only student two is acceptable, all right? Uh, but uh, student one did not apply to college one. So therefore, uh, college one rejects student one. All right. What about college two? Well, the, this, this central authority is going to look at college two. College two uh, received application from student two, which is acceptable. And so C2 accepts tentatively student two. I'm sorry. All right. So this is the end of step one. Um, step two, I'm sorry, in step one, student two is placed tentatively to college two, but student one is still not matched. So therefore, the process is going to move to step two. In step two, because only student one remained, student one is going to apply his own, uh, I'm sorry, his second best school. Remember, you can't apply to uh, your rejected school. So student one is going to apply to college two. Um, remember, student two was already accepted, and so he doesn't make any application, all right? Well, then what's gonna happen? In the second step, college one did not receive any applicants. College two, remember, in the second step, uh, the college two not only considers the new applicant, but also considers the previously accepted applicants tentatively accepted applicants. So college two is going to say, uh, well, the, the authority is going to say, all right, I assigned student two to college two, and now student one also applies. But you know what? Student one is better for college two than student two. So therefore, I should ignore my previous match, and then college one, I'm sorry, uh, student Student two should be admit. Oops, I'm sorry. Student one should be admitted to uh, college um, two. Okay. Well, what's going to happen to student two, which was accepted in step one? Well, student two rejected. Okay. Well, now remember we still have a student who has not been. Uh, matched. Well, then therefore the process will move on to step three. Well, in step three, 
um, only student two is going to make uh, an, an, ex, uh, an application. And remember, you cannot apply to a college where you have been rejected. And so student two applies college one. So college one receives only one applicant, which is student two, and it's acceptable. And so therefore, student uh, two admitted or matched, I mean, when I say admitted, I mean matched to uh, college one. So therefore, mu prime is going to be the following. Student one is matched with college two. And student two is uh, admitted to, sorry, this is student two, is, is matched with college one. As you see, the outcome will be completely different. So, once school one or college one lies about his true preferences, all right, what does it, what does it get? Well, remember previously college one was getting S1. So mu C1 was equal to S1. Mu prime C1, however, is uh, S2. Well, what is the difference? Well, don't forget, this part is very important. Everybody else's declaration of preferences, we keep the same. Remember the dominant strategy? It says, keep everybody else's strategy fixed, whatever it is. Telling, uh, so my strategy here, the do, uh, sort of telling the truth, should be dominant strategy, meaning it should be better than right? It's better than uh, telling any other preference relation, I mean lying. So here the mu c1 uh, must be preferred to or the same as mu prime c1 for player one. We keep everybody else's preferences. These are the declaration of preferences are like strategies, all right? And so what happens is that when college one lies about his preferences. Don't forget his true preferences. Uh, college one was C2 and S2 and then S1, right? This is the true preference. Previously, uh, the college one was declaring truthfully. Now, in this scenario, uh, college one lies about its preferences and says school uh, student one is actually not acceptable. By doing this, uh, college one actually ensures that it gets its own best student. All right. So again, when college one tells the truth, uh, according to this student proposing deferred acceptance algorithm, college one is going to get student one, which is its second best. By lying, right? well, how you lie is important, obviously, but by lying, the school one, a college one, I'm sorry, can actually get its first best. So therefore, lying is more profitable than telling the truth. And so telling truth is not a dominant strategy. Because remember the idea of dominant strategy, whatever the other guys do, my opponents, telling the truth, you know, playing that strategy should give me a higher payoff. Maybe the same, but higher payoff. Here, it clearly does not give, telling the truth does not give a higher payoff or the same payoff. So, therefore, um, if we think of matching uh, as a game where players, colleges and students, tell or declare their preferences, so their strategies are declaring preferences. Well, in this game, when a player lies, meaning does not declare truthfully, he can actually benefit, all right? And so in this case, we say this mechanism is therefore not strategy proof, all right? Or sometimes we call it manipulable. Well, once again, I'm not going to define strategy proofness or mechanism fully formally, uh, because we are going to talk about those things in much more detail when I introduce the concept of mechanism design. But in the mechanism, I'm sorry, in the matching uh, framework, 
uh, we can talk about whether a mechanism or an algorithm is, is strategy proof or not. Um, and so in the next episode, I'm going to talk about few impossibility theorems.